And he said, I'd like to do Elysee next year. And then he said, I'd like to do Faust in two years. And my heart sort of sank slightly because I didn't think Faust was sort of my sort of piece. Uh, and I had listened to it and I thought, actually, this is exactly my sort of piece. And I think Faust was a big hit here. And I thought, I wonder what's going to come next. And I had a vague feeling it might be Carmen. So he uh, offered me Carmen and I oohed and ahed a little bit because. It is probably the most famous opera in the world. Everybody knows the music in this, um, either from listening to it or seeing the opera, or, you know, it's in musicals, it's on television, it's in adverts, it's in the elevator. Uh, and so I thought about it for a little while, and, and one of the things I was quite... I've, I've done one production of it before, disastrously, in San Diego about 20 years ago, where we never got to the end of Act 3 because there was a big hole in the set which is supposed to be the countryside, and the chorus kept on falling down. <laughs> every rehearsal, every rehearsal suddenly fell down. And by the time we got to just before opening, the ambulances were lined up outside the stage door even before we'd started the rehearsal. So it was a, it was a bit of a disaster. But, um, but one of the things I was quite clear about was that there is something in this, that there are lots of things in this that never seem to me to be addressed. One of them is, what on earth is going on in Hacks 2 and 3 with all this smuggling? Uh, and if you set the production in the time that it's intended or in the time of composition, it's usually smuggling across the border with Gibraltar and it's usually barrels of sherry, uh, tobacco and lace. If you set it, as lots of people do, in the 30s during the Spanish Civil War, it's, it's guns. I wanted, something happened, and I, I saw ooh, last year, uh, when I was in Moscow, uh, I saw, of all things, Breaking Bad. And Breaking Bad, I think, is probably the best TV I've ever seen. But it was absolute, it, it just seemed to me to conjure, uh, the world that it, it presented seemed to me to conjure up exactly what the world is for the smugglers, uh, uh, or dealers, as we're now going to call them, uh, uh, in Acts 2 and 3 of Carmen. I was also aware of something else, which is that there is, in, not only here, uh, and the, uh, with this state and the proximity to Mexico, but, you know, even in, in Britain, there is this whole question about immigration and illegal immigration. So what we wanted to do was find a kind of milieu that, that addressed all of those. So the, uh, Dan Caira and Ramondado and the chorus are, uh, and, and Lila's Pasture, Lila's Pasture's bars are a kind of cover for, for uh, illicit drugs. and. Uh, Act 3 is kind of about getting people over the border into the US. Uh, so that was our starting point with it. Uh, we've kept the period slightly flexible. I'd say it's any time between 50, the 50s and, and the early 70s. Um, it's also about other things. I mean, uh, it, it, it's about, if you look at it, if you like, uh, the strength of women and the, dare I say, the ina inadequacy of men somewhere. Uh, um, I notice you're not going rrr, rrr, rrr again. <laughs> um, and we've been very fortunate because we had lots of cast changes, especially with the Carmen, that we've ended up with Daniela Mack, who is absolutely extraordinary. I, I, I've never worked with her before. Uh, we met her husband, who's singing Don Pasquale, was a blind boy in England at the festival. And I met her there last year. And she said, well, who is she? And I said, well, I think we're going to play her a little bit like Amy Winehouse. And I could see her pale for a second, but she's, uh, she's taken all of that on board. So it's, it's a very, I think, modern take on it. Uh, one of the things we've done with it is, I did a talk today, and a, fr a friend of mine, Jimmy Zeitz, came to it, and he saw the set, and he said, it's very bland. And I said, well, the reason it's bland is because we have lots of film, lots of projections in this. And it's the first time I believe Santa Fe's used them. Uh, we've got a very good guy called John Driscoll who... Uh, so when we've not been rehearsing in the rehearsal rooms, we've been out on campus shooting films in the interviews so that the story... The, the things that aren't said in the story are illustrated uh, on the films during the, the preludes. So it's a very... Uh, it, it's kind of a mixed media event to a certain extent. I think if we'd had a little bit longer, it might have been a bit more of it, but, uh, yeah. Any more? Do we have any questions?
question.